Here's a quick demo I made. We have a player whose only means of interacting with the world is pushing and slamming into things. The switch can be switched and the script can be broken. How would you make something similar while keeping it extensible? Okay, well, since everything is snapped to the grid, let's have them inherit grid object. Rocks and crates can be pushed around, so inherit pushable grid object. The player is obviously its own thing. Switches can be interacted with, so inherit interactable grid object. Yeah. Oh, but the crate is also technically interactable, so inherit pushable interactable grid object? No, no. How about making all grid objects pushable and enabling it only for those we need? But then these guys have a bunch of code they're not even using at all and if we did this for every misalignment like this, we'd end up with a lot of objects with a lot of useless parameters and methods. Hmm, what to do? Of course, this is a small and simple example, but this sort of problem often pops up with object-oriented programming. Oftentimes, your code's functionality doesn't neatly organize itself into a tree-like structure. You're gonna have exceptions. The more you try to organize your classes like this, the more you'll end up having to introduce vague and obscure parent classes that don't really contribute anything to your app. Imagine you're in a first-person shooter game, and you got this cool new gun that shoots piercing bullets. Now, what if you wanted it to shoot piercing fire bullets instead? Object-oriented programming would tell you that's not possible because it's not part of this other family of guns that specifically shoot fire bullets. And as a dev, this kind of sucks. One popular solution to this is Entity Component Systems. With ECS's, functionality is extended, not inherited. In our FPS analogy, components are like mods you attach to upgrade your gun. Add the Fire Bullets mod to your piercing gun and bim bam boom, piercing fire bullets. Want your gun to steal enemies' health? Just add the Leech mod. Maybe there could be a synergy there where your enemies burn and you slowly absorb their health. You get my point. It's super flexible. And what do you know? The second most popular game engine on GitHub uses Entity Component Systems. One downside though is that it can be repetitive and tedious sometimes. Ideally, we want a mixture of both. You know what is? Godo. Go dot, go dot, whatever. But, but Kenta, how is go dot an ECS? It's clearly object oriented. Well, in go dot, we have nodes. Nodes can have parent child relationships, and nodes can represent anything, even functionality. So, how about we make a script that makes its parent pushable? and slap that as a child of anything we want to be pushable. In short, that's how I made that demo. I have a pushable component I can add as a child to any grid object node, and it's gonna handle all the pushing logic. Same thing for the interactable component. Now, if you want crates to be both pushable and interactable, we just add both. And the neat thing about using nodes as components is you can dynamically add or remove functionality. For example, we could dynamically enable or disable the interactable component on that enemy in full Baba is you style. Again, game dev is a balancing act. You don't want to go too far with this. For example, we wouldn't make a grid component since all objects will need it and it's just gonna make it redundant and tedious for ourselves. Inheritance is better suited in this case. Now, you may be asking, okay, so nodes can have components which are nodes in and of themselves. So how do you make references to those components? How do you even detect if a node has a certain component? 
Well, there's a few ways to do this. First is to use export variables for in-editor node references. It's easy to implement, and it's clear what the dependencies are. Second is to use get node or get node or null. But it does mean you can't really have components that aren't direct children. At least, not without looping. And third, using metadata, which is what I did. When a component enters a tree, it registers itself in its owner's metadata. Next, if you want to get that component, we can just call get meta or has meta to check if it exists. So yeah, inheritance can often be limiting. Try using components. They simplify things, keep everything flexible, and they're pretty intuitive as well. I hope you learned something. See you next time.